Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add an assignment, and I'm also going to show you really quickly how to provide grades or feedback for that assignment as well, because it's um, a process that is not necessarily uh, intuitive. So let me show you how that works. We'll start by, um, we've, we're in the, the sample course, the one we've set up. I've got the editing turned on. See, if I click this, it goes off. You can see your icons. And let's create an assignment in the second module, in, or sorry, second topic, in changing module names. So an assignment is an activity. So you look here, you won't find assignments. You're going to click on add an activity, and here's all the assignment options. So there's a few different choices you have. Advanced uploading of files allows your learners to submit more than one file. So you've done that before with me, where you might have sub submitted your sections analysis separate from your activity that you did in that course. Uh, in my 3100 course, students are required to submit a lesson plan and a rationale. Some of them submit them separately in two files. So this is handy for students, and I usually choose this option. The other option is upload a single file which prevents them from including more than one file in their assignment. And sometimes that creates frustration and they don't know what to do when they get to that point. They've created two files and they can't upload them both, so I find this is safe. Online text allows the student to put information and submit it to you by typing directly. And you might have seen that in the PIDP where you were giving, giving yourself self-assessments each week and you had to write a little uh, rationale that was a paragraph or two and you typed it directly into the assignment upload. You didn't upload a file. That's the online te text. Offline activity allows you as an instructor to grade an assignment without any submissions happening. So an example of that is your copyright discussion activity. I've asked you to meet certain requirements to earn a grade in that discussion and I'll be just looking at the forum rather than asking you to upload anything. That's what up offline activity is. And then audio recording allows them to actually submit a link to an audio recording. So as I said earlier, I like to choose advanced uploading of files just to reduce any frustration or confusion. And that's the assignment that we'll upload. So we're in the changing module names, so I'll call it change, changing module names, or I'll call it change your module name. So this is the name of the assignment, it's just you, you call it what you want to call it, something that fits and is short and to the point and makes sense. The description is the instructions to the learners so that they know exactly what's required. Now there's a couple ways to do it. You can put all of the information that they need in this section here, and that can grow to a full page easily. Or you can ask them to refer to a PDF that's elsewhere on the course shell. And I've done it before where the, you have a PDF and students will go in and see the details there. And that's really handy, I find, when you have uh, rubrics or things that require layout and formatting. But let's just do a simple version here. So I've copied and I'm going to paste uh, the directions to learners. So I said change your module name to something that's more appropriate for your course and section. Once you have done so, create a print screen of your course layout showing all modules in the closed format so that all module names are visible. Upload your file by May 30th. So I've given them the deadline. You can click this box uh, to allow all of this information to show on the home page, but I find that looks quite messy and I prefer to leave it off the home page. This is the available date, so when students are actually able to upload their assignments. And in a course like this, you would have that available from the start of the course because then they can upload whenever they're ready. If you wanted them to not be able to upload early, then you would change this date accordingly. The due date is, of course, up here I said May 30th, so let's select May 30th. And what this does is it creates font in red for the learners if they were to submit after this date so they know that they've missed a deadline. Prevent late submissions, so after May 30th, no submissions will be allowed if you click yes. If you click no, then you're not preventing late and they will be allowed to submit late. Grade, you select what the assignment is worth, how much it's out of, so you could click anything from 3 marks or 5 marks all the way up to 100 marks, or you can have these satisfactory, unsatisfactory, yes, no, those kinds of things. 
simple direct grading versus rubric. I usually leave it at simple direct grading and uncategorized grade category. I've honestly never used this tab, this, this drop down. So here we have a couple of other things. Maximum file size, usually leave it. Allow deleting, so if they change their mind, they can delete it. Maximum number of files, three. You can change that to however many you want. Notes allows them to say a little blurb with the attachment. If they'd like to, then you check yes if you want them to allow notes. Uh, high description before available, that's self-explanatory. Email alerts to teachers. What that is, is you know when I've marked one of your assignments, you get an email that says there's feedback on the Moodle shell? Well, changing this to yes means I get a, a, a note in my email when you've submitted something. So it's a really handy tool to change this to yes, email alerts to teachers. And enable send for marking button simply asks the learners, are you sure, before they submit. So that's, that's nice to have too, just in case they, they're not sure. And I don't really change much else. This is just restricting access and I think for most of us we're going to have all learners learners have access to all the assignments so we go ahead and save and return to course and here's the assignments okay so I'll click on it and let you see the details that we have put there okay no attempts have been made on this assignment yet so nothing's been uploaded Tuesday April 30th is when it's available Thursday May 30th is when it's due and there's your assignment uh, sitting on the course ready for people to upload. If you wanted to edit it, of course you click here. So now let me quickly show you how to grade. So let's say you get a note that says somebody has submitted these, their assignment. So you come into group Moodle and you click on grades and it'll provide you, usually it comes to the grader report first. This is usually the, the default screen you see. Here will be a list of all of the students that are in your course. It doesn't really help to show you a, a course where there's no students, but they'll be all here. And then all of the assignments will go across this way. So this is the one we just created. I find it's best to go to user report, which will show you all of the students um, that you have. And I'm just going to move this over for a second to show you. You can drop down and choose your list here. So at this point, I don't have anybody else other than me in this course, so there's no list of students. But at this, from here, you could drop down, you'd see your list of all of your students. So I'm going to mark Joanne Reed's Change Your Module Name, so I'll click on that. And it allows me to enter the grade, and also allows me to provide any feedback. And once I've provided feedback and given a grade, then I scroll down and click Save Changes. And that's how I get feedback to Joanne Reed about her assignment. Okay, so hopefully that helps give you some information about how to add assignments and how to grade assignments. You'll probably want to play with it to see what works best for you, but that's the whole point of this course, so enjoy the playing.